Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be doing my end of the year reflections and curriculum review for my kindergartner and my pre-K four. You guys, I cannot believe I have completed my fourth year of homeschool and I have officially completed my first go around with kindergartner with my middle daughter and I'm so excited. You guys, I'm not gonna lie, I was so nervous and starting off one of my kiddos from the very beginning in our homeschooling journey. When I started off my homeschooling journey with my oldest daughter, she was in the third grade. So I really feel like uh, because she had previous public school experience from K through second, I really had a good layer of foundation for her. And I really just was like continuing her education. I wasn't starting from the bottom up, but I really felt a lot of pressure uh, this homeschooling year and starting one of my kiddos from the bottom up. And um, not only that, uh, my middle daughter, she does have a speech delay. So I was really apprehensive in thinking, can I truly teach her and provide her with all of the things and the resources that she needs, even in knowing, uh, I guess, her speech delay. But I definitely will say I am so proud of not only my daughter, but I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself for uh, believing that I can do it, for doing the resource, doing the research and uh, finding all of the resources that I was going to need to aid my middle daughter in her having a successful uh, kindergarten year. And I'm so happy and I'm so proud of myself. Um, I definitely will say that again, this year was filled with uncertainty, but I really feel like we came out on top. Um, some things that I definitely will say I wish I didn't do uh, this homeschooling year when it came to my kindergartner is I really wish that I would not have compared her to other people and other kids that I was seeing on like the internet. I really wish I wasn't comparing her to her siblings in our household because I really felt like uh, in those moments when I would fall into that comparison trap, it was really a thief of joy from the successes that we were having in our own homeschool. I really had to look at my middle daughter uh, for her successes and I really had to uh, celebrate those milestones that we were reaching, even though I felt like in times in our homeschool progress was slow. Uh, if I could talk to my past self right now, if future Brittany could go back and talk to past Brittany, I would say you can do it. I would say, you know, you have all of the things you're capable of doing. If you don't know how to do it, uh, make sure you vet out those resources that you need to aid you in a successful homeschool year. And I really wish that I could go back and talk to that, Brittany, but uh, here I am on the other side and I'm really, really happy again, like I said. Um, I really wish that I could go back and tell myself, my future self, that uh, it's okay if your kids have a short attention span my uh, kindergartner, you guys, when we first started off our homeschooling journey, I could barely get her to work with me for about 10 minutes. Uh, we were just doing short bursts and I was really becoming concerned like it's 10 minutes really going to be enough for me to teach her. And as the course of our homeschooling year went, those 10 minutes turned to uh, 15, turned to 20. And at the end of our homeschooling year, she can now sit with me for 30 minutes and do all all of her reading, writing, and math in one shot. So I definitely will say if you have a kiddo with a short attention span, work with what you have. Don't worry too much about, um, I should say, uh, completing every single thing every single day when you first start off your homeschooling journey. Just know if you do math one day, reading one day for the first couple of weeks when you start off your kindergartner, it's okay. Their stamina will build up, keep things fun and light and keep them continuing wanting to come at the table and learn. You definitely will have success. And I found that to be true, especially for my uh, middle wiggly body. Uh, she definitely was like that at the beginning, but now you guys, she is like right at this table. She's uh, ready to play the games and uh, she is like for all of the school. So um, I definitely will say that was one of my like curves that I had to, um, I guess, uh, or humps I had to uh, go over in our kindergarten year. This homeschooling year, my uh, middle daughter, she learned how to read short stories. 
She knows how to write all of her capital and lowercase letters. She knows how to write simple phonetic sentences with a little picture on top. We actually started that at the end of our um, homeschooling uh, year and I'm so happy. So she's really going to begin working and mastering that skill going into the first grade. Uh, she knows how to write all of her numbers. She can add, she can subtract. She knows like all of her measurements. She knows shapes, patterns, all of those basic skills. Uh, that I truly can say I checked off and accomplished all of the things she needs to learn in kindergarten. And I, I'm just proud of us, like I said, and um, those are all of the accomplishments that uh, we did. So you guys, uh, that is my kindergartner's reflections. Now, as far as my pre-K four's reflections, I really can say my pre-K four she really exceeded my expectations uh, when it came to this homeschooling year. When we started off our homeschooling year, she was only three years old, you guys. And I definitely will say, I don't know what it is about that baby child, <laughs> that last baby, but they want a seat at the table. They want their own uh, pencil box. They want their own crayons. They want their own workbooks. They want to do what they see the big kids is doing. And I definitely will say, I'm so happy that I did not deny her a seat at the table this homeschooling year. I'm so happy that I found resources that was going to meet her and meet her needs and she really exceeded my expectations when it came to her schooling. Uh, this year she really flourished in our second semester after she turned four and I really can say in our second semester of our homeschooling year was really when my pre-k four began to uh, start off doing a lot of kindergarten work that I was seeing my kindergarten do, my kindergartner do at the beginning of her homeschooling year. Um, she actually worked a lot on her letter sounds. She mastered all of her letter sounds. We began with two letter blends and she uh, worked her way all the way up to CBC words uh, this homeschooling year. Um, she knows how to write all of her numbers one to ten and all of her capital letters. She's still working on her scissor skills because she's a lefty. Um, I truly can say um, that I am like I said happy I gave her a seat at the table and I allowed her to flourish and I allowed her to be with the big kids and um, I'm happy to see the successes and the things that she's learned and uh, it's really just going to aid me in this upcoming homeschool year. Year. I can kind of just pick up where we're at with my youngest and kind of see where it goes. But so far, she really, really enjoys school and I'm happy to do school with my uh, baby girl. So you guys, now let's go ahead and get into our uh, curricula for um, my kindergartner. And then I'm going to talk about the curriculum that I use for my pre-K four. And um, yeah, you guys this year, uh, like I said before, I really kept things very simple with my kindergartner. We only did reading, writing, math and arithmetic. I didn't do any science or history. Uh, in the state of Georgia, kindergarten is not a required uh, homeschooling year uh, for us to like register our kiddos. So I really had full uh, reign to pick and choose what I really wanted to do this homeschooling year without the pressure to meet the requirements of my state when it comes to our homeschooling laws, which I'm so grateful for. Um, because I just focused on reading, writing, and arithmetic, I really was able to dedicate that extra time to do her speech with my middle daughter. Um, we actually did speech through the public school system here in the state of Georgia. They actually offer speech therapy and a lot of other services completely free to homeschoolers. Uh, you just have to fill out the paperwork. Um, I have a homeschool coordinator that actually works with me uh, as as far as doing speech, I'm able to have access to speak with kindergarten teachers, um, to speak with different, um, I guess, have different resources from the public system to aid me uh, when it comes to uh, my daughter's education, which is really, really cool. Um, I really enjoyed having that extra time for us to be able to focus on speech this year because uh, that was my main priority. And I definitely will say my middle daughter, she flourished in speech this year. And I'm so proud of all of her hard work and accomplishments. She's been in speech since she was two years old. So just to see her kind of like get over this huge hump when it comes to like her speech, it's just been amazing for us. So that was my primary focus. So let's go into the easiest things, which was handwriting. We we did, of course, handwriting without tears. I love this. She did the green book in her pre-K four year. So this homeschooling year, we did the purple book, which was the kickstart to kindergarten. And we're about halfway through with the second book, which is letters and numbers for me. We're just going to finish this one off over the summer. And if this goes into our next uh, homeschooling year, that's fine. I already have the first grade book as well. So 
I really, really enjoy handwriting without tears. I like the systematic approach when it comes to them doing their proper uh, handwriting formations. Um, I definitely will say um, I enjoy it for their print, but I don't think I'm going to use handwriting without tears when it comes to teaching them their cursive. I may use a different curriculum for that uh, as we transition into that after like the second grade, but uh, I do love it for their uh, basic print formation. Um, so we really, really enjoyed this. This has definitely been a staple in my homeschool. I think what this is going on our uh, third year using handwriting without tears with all of my kiddos. So uh, yeah. Uh, that was an easy one. Um, as far as math goes, you guys, we did kindergarten math of confidence. And we also did uh, Matthew C. Primer. And you guys, I absolutely loved both of these curriculums. Um, I am going to be making a separate review video of kindergarten math with confidence, uh, Matthew C. Primer. That is going to be coming very, very soon on my channel. I definitely will say I really, really enjoyed the conceptual knowledge and the deep understanding when it came to number senses with math with confidence. I love that math with confidence covered a little bit more concepts such as like shapes, measurement, symmetry. Um, they covered more things than within the math you see. I use math you see as my supplemental math. So we would do math with confidence Monday through uh, Thursday because this is a four day week program. They do have like a fun enrichment exercise on that fifth day, which uh, includes the math picture book that we did. And on the fifth day, I would always do the math picture book and whatever exercise when it came to math with confidence. And then we would do math you see. Uh, so we will always do both of these curriculums. So Math of Confidence, Math you see, uh, Monday through, Math you see was Monday through Friday, Math of Confidence, Monday through Thursday. So that's kind of like how I did it in our homeschool. And I really loved her learning the concepts through Math of Confidence and then getting that extra practice and repetition through Math you see. But again, like I said before, I will have my separate review video on Math with Confidence. Um, all of my, um, I guess my pros about it, uh, things I would do differently or things I am going to be doing differently as I'm doing the program with my rising kindergartner coming up this uh, upcoming year but I really enjoyed it and I'm so happy with my math curricula choice when it came to, or when it comes to like our homeschool for kindergarten so we really really enjoyed that so we finished the kindergarten math with confidence in March and what we did was we went ahead and picked up the first grade math with confidence and we finished this off at the end of our homeschool year we're on uh, week five of the first grade math with confidence. Um, I'm not too sure again if we're going to work in this through the summer, uh, but I do have this here. So if we do want to pick up a few lessons throughout the summer, we can. But for the most part, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause this and we will begin this at the beginning of her first grade year. But uh, I absolutely love this math program. A little spoiler. <laughs> so that is what we did with math. Now, as far as phonics instructions, we worked in all about reading level one. And I definitely will say, if you watch a lot of my videos, I really think I have like a love-hate relationship with All About Reading. I feel like um, <laughs> maybe it was just because of my daughter's progress being slow. With it, I began to doubt the program and I began to feel, I began to lack confidence in uh, the program and saying like, am I doing something wrong? Uh, you guys, I promise you, I have read the front of this book the back of this book, I have went online and, and read all the facts, the uh, facts and the tips and tricks when it comes to all about reading. I joined a few all about reading Facebook groups just to kind of see any tips or tricks that people have and using all about reading because I know a lot of people have success with this program. But I definitely will say uh, I was doubting this program. However, I am so happy that I stuck with it because now we have been going through lessons really, really fast. Things are clicking with her and I'm so happy I did not give up on this program because I am truly beginning to love and see why people love it. And I definitely love like the multi-sensory approach to the uh, All About Reading. I love how we have the letter towels that we can use when we are uh, working on the letters. And I just love how she's able to pull these like magnetic towels and working with it. Um, I love this box right here that we use uh, to go over like all of the high fluency green words and again the 
yellow words are just the sound cards that we go over at the beginning of each lesson. So I really do appreciate all the different approaches it comes to helping the kiddos learn their reading. It's scripted. But one thing I will say is when I began to get stuck on lessons, like as far as we had, I felt like we may have had too many high frequency words. We were not quite ready to move on to the next lesson was areas where I would, I kind of didn't really know what to do. Uh, and I'm so happy that um, what I ended up doing instead of quitting the program, I just went online, you guys, and I found a lot of like uh, resources from actual like people to teach me how to teach her. One of my favorite online uh, resources in teaching phonics was uh, Spencer's channel from Toddlers Can Read. He posted so many good nugget videos how I was able to take the concepts that he was teaching reading and apply it to the all about reading. And it really aided me in giving my daughter effective phonics instructions. It really gave me the confidence as a parent in coming in our phonics instructions. And I really, really appreciated the time and the effort he put in his videos. Because even though I wasn't doing his program that he wrote, I was able to take all of the nuggets and apply it to all about reading. And I definitely will say if I can give any Anyone, any tips of advice when it comes to phonics instruction is that just don't go into phonics and reading instruction and just think that oh yeah you just can use one book and that's the end all be all you will be pulling in a variety of different resources and games and things to continue to engage your kids in working as far as teaching them how to read and sometimes you do want it just to be one book and it to be done but it's really not like that when it comes to reading instruction a lot of time i had to shake things up change the different resources and i'm going to share with you guys some of the things that i did do in phonics to shake things up to kind of like get over us over the humps but I definitely will say um, just be open to use multiple resources be open to stepping away from the lessons because sometimes you guys I wouldn't do an all about reading lesson I would just take out our fluency cards and our board and we would just practice just words like right here um, this was another cool thing that I did I would grab these little teeny toys for my daughter that she had in her room these trinket toys and I would just put it right here and we will practice each sound and she'll uh, put her toy under each sound as far as helping her blend so those are just different ways that I kept her engaged when it came to our lesson I also have like the all about reading the letter tile app and uh, we used that for a while in our first semester but I was finding it became distracting and we went back to just the old school letter tiles and that really helped her out and it helped her to be uh remain focused and learning um another thing that i would do is i would use different like uh magnet tile uh letters to go over our reading instruction to shake it up so she wasn't just using the letter tiles from the all about reading I would use my other magnetile letters. Sometimes we would just take a plain dry erase board with a uh, marker and I would just write out the words and we would just go over it that way. I really kept things and shook things up for her when it came to reading and it just worked out so well for her. So I'm really, really uh, happy about our success with All About Reading. We made it all the way to lesson 17 and um, I really wanted to make it to lesson 27, but I'm happy with where we're at and we're just gonna continue trucking along with all about reading into her first grade year and again I'm really proud of her success. Uh, one thing I definitely will say about All About Reading is she really enjoyed these cute little stories in this Run Bug Run book. A lot of them are really funny and I like them. I really loved how All About Reading already includes like the reading comprehension so it tells you what page number to ask your kiddo a question and I was so surprised of my um, kindergartner's comprehension level already after just reading these short stories and I really like how it gets them to stop and think about what they actually read this early on in reading. So that's one thing I really appreciate about All About Reading and their readers. So along with All About Reading, again, we use the Explode the Code. And this, you will be so surprised how this marries so well with All About Reading. A lot of the uh, words that they're going over, uh, they match the high frequency words. And these are just really, really, really simple activities you can do with your kiddos. Again, like I said, some days I wouldn't even pull out and do an All About Reading lesson. We would just do Explode the Code. We would practice the high frequency words and we would just call it a day. And uh, this really helped her it's something about them actually writing out the cvc word and blending it together that really helped it stick with her and solidify with her uh, we completed half of this book the explode the cult level one and i hope to complete this uh one over the summer and then we
probably can go into books one and a half and two in her first grade year but this was definitely a great addition i definitely will say don't skip out on the explode the gold the explode the codes teacher guide because this has really really good nuggets in here uh, as far as like phonemic awareness um different stories and picture books you can get with your kiddos and um this is definitely affordable and i definitely will say um you can actually use the explode the code uh this teacher's guide and the workbook as like a all in one reading curriculum but i didn't use it that way but this little teacher's guide was definitely very helpful in giving me more tips and activities to do when we wasn't necessarily ready to move on to the next lesson and all about reading so i really enjoyed explode the cold uh, something else that i used again with our reading instruction was bob books i absolutely love these bob books for my kindergartner um a lot of the times uh we wasn't ready to read it like another story in our run bug run book but i wanted her to practice reading a story every single day so i would just pull out one of these books and she would just practice it at the end of our um school session and or she would read it to me at night before bedtime she would read me a cute little story and she really got a good kick out of these bob books and I'm happy that I had other additional readers for her to read uh, so she can feel like that sense of accomplishment like she actually read a book you know cover to cover and she, just a smile on her face to see her when she completed like one of these Bob books it was just I don't know it's just gold for me and I definitely am happy that I have these Bob books now for our upcoming homeschool year I went ahead and I got these uh, decodable books from toddlers can read again that Spencer's channel you guys please check it out he has so many nuggets but I got these cute books to go along with our Bob books for this upcoming year. This is a set of 12. And um, I am so happy to have additional readers along with our All About Reading curricula. So uh, that is like as far as like the readers goes. Now, one thing that I also did do in teaching her um, reading and finest instruction is that I pulled out these old school sight word box books. I have the levels one to three. I actually use these with my oldest daughter when um, I was helping her uh, learn how to read. I was really supplementing her education at home uh, when she was in public school. We would always go over these words and I would have her read to me at night uh, when she was in public school, my oldest daughter. So I saved these and I pulled these off and what I did was when my daughter would master the high frequency uh, words right here in the all about reading what I would do is I would pull out those same exact words in these uh, sight word uh, bundles and I would just lay them out on the floor I would use my pointer stick we would just play games I would have her like hop and jump on these words uh, so she can really begin to get fluent with it and as you guys can see these sight words that I pulled out are actually words she can sound out so if she forgot the word she can actually sound it out in in so she's so these were still giving her like that uh, I guess repetition and practice she needs so when she, it came time for her to read the little books she was able to be able to really be confident in knowing a lot of the words uh, and only happened to sound out some and it really aided her in her fluency and I do like these sight word books uh, these sight word um, cards because it has a cute little sentence at the back and sometimes that also helped her remember the high frequency words so I really am happy that I pulled out these and I just played different games and shook it up when it came to her like phonics instructions uh, as far as my uh, kindergartner goes. So those are like all of the pieces of curricula that I used. And again, like I said, I really kept things really, really simple when it came to her uh schooling this year so that is all of her curricula now let's go into my pre-k fours curricula and the things that i use for her so and starting off our homeschooling year for her um i thought that i was going to do the all about reading pre-reading i actually did this with my um middle daughter last year but i definitely will say she was surpassed this point the pre-reading goes over uh rhymes letter sounds they have a, fu a full on um, like um poems that you're going to be reading to them little short stories stories it's really really cute but um my uh last daughter she definitely surpassed this point she already mastered her letter sounds and i made the ultimate decision to say you know what she doesn't need this let me move on to the next level with her so what we ended up doing for her is we ended up doing the get ready for the cold series and she absolutely loved these books we're not we're not quite finished with the c book we should finish this one over the summer but she loved these this really just took her up a 
a next notch when it came to her letter sounds, understanding the beginning sounds, the ending sounds of words. Um, I really enjoyed, again, using the teacher's guide with it because it had like a lot of nuggets in using the Get Ready for the Cold series and she loved these. Um, at the beginning of our homeschooling year, her penmanship wasn't quite there when it comes to like her... Uh, when it came to like writing the letter. So what I would do is I would just have her use like different stickers um, and then we would use um, crayons and different things like that. I really didn't require her to like write out the letters and do the handwriting portions in these books and she really, really enjoyed them. So these are the Get Ready for the Codes, uh, what I use for phonics instructions for her. Now I also um, began doing uh, two letter blend letters with her by using the JDA Elemental phonics series with her where we would just go over two letter blends to really get her fluent in blending two letters and what I did was I just have my little flashcards that I made and again I would just put these all over the floor and she would go over the different blend letters and um, it really helped her begin to be fluent in blending those two words and after she began blending the two words we began working on CBC words and she began blending three letter uh, words my uh, four-year-old so that is kind of like what she did so we did that as far as her phonics instructions for a while all the way up until this point and I made the transition from elemental phonics to teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons because I needed more instructions when it came to her she wasn't quite ready to begin all about reading level one and I definitely can see she uh, had the skills to begin to really read so I pulled this off of my shelf and she's doing really really well with this I think at this point we're on lesson 18 right now and it's going very very well with her and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work in the teacher child to read in 100 easy lessons and then eventually transition her into all about reading level one and that's what I'm going to be doing uh, with my four-year-old right now but that is everything we ended up doing as far as phonics goes. Um, so she kind of like surpassed my expectations when it came to that. Now, as far as math goes, we did preschooling math at home. She absolutely loved this. This was my second go around with this book and I absolutely loved it as well. I really love the foundation that it lays because uh, she completed this book in December and then, um, not December, excuse me, she completed this book in March and then we transitioned into um, kindergarten math with confidence with her for the remaining of our school year. So so uh, she did really, really well with this and it really transitioned her to the kindergarten math of confidence seamlessly. So I'm really, really happy with this book. It's affordable and um, I'm kind of sad that this was my last go around with this one, but it was really, really fun. I love the activities. Um, we also did the JDA's uh, beginning preschooling math book. And again, these are just fun, cute little exercises when it came to just reinforcing those same math skills that she learned when it came to her um, preschooling math at home. Because this book doesn't have a workbook, she wanted a workbook. I already had this on PDF because I did this with my uh, middle daughter last year as far as like extra worksheets as well so I just reprinted it off it was already here at home and it was just something fun for her to continue to work on those math skills so she really really enjoyed that as far as math now as far as penmanship goes she did the first uh, my school uh, book when it came to handwriting without tears we used the chalkboard and we used the little sponges and the chalk as far as teaching her her capital letters so she knows how to write all of her capital letters and she really really enjoyed this book we didn't pick up this book until january but my little lefty she is writing so good um as far as writing her numbers we use all of these cute little um number uh poems and rhymes from the teachingmama.org and she learned how to write all of her numbers really really seamlessly and um it's so cool because now that she is in kindergarten math with confidence she knows how to write all of her numbers and she's doing so 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 well i really love these rhymes if your kiddos are struggling in learning how to write their uh letters these rhymes really really helps like this one's really really cute it says straight line down then around with a grin that's how we make the number 10. and uh they're, they're really really cute and my kiddos love these little rhymes when it came to writing their numbers so uh, as far as my pre-K forward, um, we just kind of pivoted uh, as far as her curricula goes. I just had to level her up and kind of follow her lead, but she did really, really well. And again, like I said, she exceeded my expectations and she loved coming and having a seat at the table and doing school. And I'm so, so, so proud of her. 
So you guys, this is my end of the year curricula review and reflections for my kindergartner and my pre-K four. Um, I definitely am happy with our year. I'm happy with our success. My only regret is I wish I believed in myself more and I wish that I had the confidence to know that I could do it because now, like I said before, um, I did it <laughs> and I'm so proud of myself. And if you're lacking that confidence and that motivation, it's okay. I just wanna let you know, it's okay. It gets to the best of us vet out resources, do your research, learn how to actually educate your kids. And I definitely think that you will be okay. Uh, you will have all the tools in your toolbox. As always, you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.